What does he want to do when he gets he gets older? When he gets older, well, he switches like every other week. When he was like five, it was a brain surgeon. Good. Now he wants to be a chemist. The other day he wanted to be a comedian though, so I don't no, know. Forget that. You served a great deal of time in prison, having an addiction. When's the last time you got a break? <laughs> nah, I can't recall. It's been so long that I can't recall the last time I caught a break, Your Honor. I mean, most people that come here, it's their first time. They're intimidated. You know, they see courtroom, the flags, Inspector Quinn who's got a gun. I'm in a robe. I got this big mallet. It's yeah. a little scary. This is the courtroom of Judge Frank Capria, where people and cases are met with compassion. A different kind of judge. A courtroom like no other. This is Caught in Providence. Senabria Flores. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Ms. Flores, your motor vehicle has been booted. Yes. You have four school zone violations and two red lights. Yes, my mom just moved and they put us, she just moved to one of those streets. She moved on Academy Ave and there's a camera and I'm still getting used to it, but I can do, a, I can play them all because I did do them. I'm getting used to them now, but if I can do a payment plan for it, Okay, <clears throat> it's gonna cost you a $100 boot fee to have the boot removed from your vehicle. Okay. Plus, it's gonna cost you $300 for the remaining fines. It's gonna be a total of $400. Okay. Okay, now are you working? I am, yes. Okay, so how much can you afford to pay today? I can do 250. So, do you have any children? Yes, I do. How many? Just one. Yeah, are you a single parent? Yes. Tell me about your kids. He just turned 10 in May. He's in camp right now. He hates it. He says it's miserable because all he wants to do is play Roblox all day long, and I won't let him. What does he want to do when he gets, he gets older? When he gets older? Well, he switches, like, every other week. When he was, like, five, it was a brain surgeon. Good. Now he wants to be a chemist. The other day he wanted to be a comedian, though, so I don't no, know. forget that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, bud, you're funny now. Let's just keep it now. <laughs> All right, the one, so he's the, such the, a one thing, the one thing I know you're going to make sure of is that he goes to college, right? Oh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. He's a very intelligent boy. The total fines were $730. With the boot fee, it was $830. I cut that in half. I reduced it to 400 Now, there are people from all over this great country and actually all over the world who send money to the court for the court to use its discretion because they have an opportunity to view our proceedings on social media. And they, under they understand people who are suffering hardship and they want to help them. And they ask the court to use its discretion in doing that. And so <clears throat> I call this the Philomena Fund after my mom, whose name was Philomena. If she were here now, she'd come up there, give you a big hug and tell you everything's going to be okay. So we're going to use $250 from the Philomena Fund to help you pay your fine. And so it's going to cost you $150. And that will get the boot released, and you won't have to pay anything else. Okay? Thank you. What's your son's name? Marcus. Marcus. Okay. And we're not going to leave you broke. So if you can't afford to pay that $150, today, just let me know, because I'm not going to let you walk out of here with no money. Is that going to, is that going to cause you a hardship? No. All right. That's only half the deal. Now, the deal here is that you get a big break today. I know you appreciate that. Yes. Now you have to pay it forward. You have to help somebody else. Someday when you're in a position to help somebody else, you have to do that. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. <laughs> How you feeling? <laughs> great. You Thank feel great? Both. Hallelujah, <laughs> right? Okay. Thank you. I know you're a great mom. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck to you. Jose Caraballo. Good morning, Your Honor. Mr. Caraballo, some of these go back like 20, 25 years ago. Yes, Your Honor. So were you, uh, were you away for a while? 
No, yeah. Uh, well, yes, I've been in and out, yes. When did you get out the last time? March, March 29th. Of this year? This year, yes. So how long were you there for? I was there for about three months. Just three months? This time, yes. But altogether, I got about 13 years in there. When are you going to straighten out? But right now, Your Honor, I'm living um, at the Galilee Mission, which is a treatment facility, because I had a struggle with addiction, and um, I was living a reckless life, as you can see. And um, I've been straightening out my life. I've been there for about 67 days now, and I've been doing correct and everything. What's your big problem? Addiction? Is that your big problem? That was my problem, problem, yes. Is that why you were in the can? Is that why you were in jail? Most of the time, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> or things that... That because things that were related to it, Because yes. of things that because you had the addiction, you did, right? Yes, Your Honor. Look, I want to tell you something. I've been on the bench a long time, right? I've had many people who appear before me, right? And I've had many people who have had addictions, right? right? Now, I have an old saying that, so, so you get knocked down. So it's not a sin to get knocked down. It's a sin not to get back up. So from what I'm hearing from you, you're trying to get back up. But I never taught, I never had one person who had an addiction before me who didn't say, I'm on the road to recovery, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna, right, Inspector Queen, do you ever have anybody up here say, you know, I, I, I can't shake it. Like, I, I'm gonna go back and do the same thing. No one says that, no. right? But we know the recidivism rate, which is the rate of people who go back and do the same thing, right, is very, very, very high, right? Yes. So I'm sure that what you're saying you know, you mean in your heart, right? right? The fact that you're working and you're gainfully employed and you're making some money helps you because now I know you're just not hanging around. Well, Your Honor, he's 67 days sober and he's in a good program where he clearly stated that they are doing uh, blood and urine testing, so that'll assist him to stay on the straight and narrow. So I'm going to do something that makes common sense here, okay? Okay. You have one, two, three. You have... These, I have three cases before me that go back to 1994. Three more, 1994, 1995. It's going to serve no useful purpose for me to find you, whatever the fines here. The fines are probably you know, over a couple of thousand dollars. It's going to do, serve no useful purpose. You're not going to be able to pay it. I'll probably drive you to distraction. You may go back to your addiction. Seriously, I understand that. There was people who are recovering can't go through a great deal of stress. So I'm not gonna place any more stress on you. Plus these cases are stale. Yes. These cases are so, st Inspector Quinn, the earliest cases like 16 years ago and all the others are 20, 25 years ago. I have what I call, and Inspector Quinn uh, feels the same way. We, have, we try to operate sometimes under the rule of what we call common sense. So I'm gonna dismiss these. Your Honor, you are? Oh, wow. Thank you, sir. I'm going to dismiss them all. Thank you, Your Honor. That's a blessing. I really appreciate this. I want to give you a chance. Whatever is before this court, and there are several, we're going to clear you through the registry of motor vehicles. So talk to me about that. When's the last time you got a break? <laughs> No, I can't recall. It's been so long that I can't recall the last time I caught a break, Your Honor. So, I mean, this is one that I'm going to remember for a long time when I got willing planning to deal with the other courts and get my license. I will remember this, Your Honor. This is big. Appreciate it very much. Okay. You served a great deal of time in prison, having an addiction. You gainfully employed. Yes. You have children. Yes. <clears throat> I have grandchildren. Yeah. You supporting them? I'm supporting my children, yes. Okay. Well, I'm going to wish you well. I appreciate it, Your Honor. Keep working. Try to get straightened out through the traffic tribunal. Oh, I'm going to. I'm rooting for you. I appreciate that, Your Honor. I won't let you down because I, I believe this is like my, one of my last chances. The way people are dropping out there, I, I, I'm scared to go so young. So I'm going definitely... Keep on cheering me on. I appreciate it, Your Honor. Okay. Now, you have to promise something else. What's you, that? you just can't get a break, right? You have to now promise me that when things get real good for you, that you will help somebody else. Your Honor, I've already thought about it. And yes, I can do that. I can pay it forward. I can definitely do that. 
Okay. Well, God is my witness. I will definitely look forward to doing that. I'm rooting for you. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Appreciate it. God bless. Have a great day. Linda Capabianco. Um, I took a right turn. Or, or did you want to tell me? <laughs> Why don't you just, why don't you just. I guess I should let you go first. Oh, you're going to give me permission to go first? <laughs> yeah. I think the reason you're so comfortable in telling us what to do here is because you've been here before, right? I have. Yeah, so she's, <laughs> she's no stranger to the I court. like to visit once in a while and say hello. I mean, most people that come here, it's their first time. They're intimidated. You know, they see courtroom, the flags, Inspector Quinn who's got a gun. I'm in a robe. I got this big mallet. It's know. a little scary. So everybody gets nervous. You come in immediately. You tell me what to do. It's like the Quinn. You don't talk into the microphone. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> All right, Miss Capabianco, we're gonna we have a video of this offense, so we're gonna show you the video, okay? okay. And then maybe you can help me make a decision. Okay, probably. You like that? Okay, yeah. let's go. Let's take a look at it. All right, the light is red. Yeah, I don't think I stopped. And there you go. Yeah. You see that sign there? Yeah. What's it say? I can't see it that good. <laughs> you can't see it? Not from here. It says right on red after stop. Yeah, okay. You see that? Yes. All right, now take a look at the video. Take a look at it as it's up there. Is there anything else you want to tell me? No, I didn't remember if I stopped or not, but mm, it's pretty yeah. clear. Now, is there anything in the video that you think would help you to say it's not clear and convincing that I cannot make a right-hand turn. What do you no, think? No, I don't. But do I have a three-year clean record? No, no. You, you no. can't use your good you record. You can't use that on that? Well, because you don't have a because they don't. Oh, because it's not charged on Because the it's not a registry. record. Okay. Right. But I want, you to look at the, I want you to look at it. Your Honor, there is absolutely nothing at the bottom of that sign obstructing that. Thank you. I didn't notice that. But those balloons are pretty high up there. Yeah. I don't think it's the balloons. I think it's the teddy bear. I can't even see the teddy bear from here. Oh, well, that's the reason. You, but I also you better can't get see. Your, you better get I those also lenses. can't see those. You better words. get those lenses checked. <laughs> <laughs> this is the. Uh, the Warby Parker this the, defense. This is the teddy bear. <laughs> teddy bear. The teddy bear prevails again, right? I think the so. The cute and cuddly. She's going to run out and buy a teddy bear. Put it in the car, right? <laughs> I changed my answer on that. Yeah, there was something on that video. All right, Linda, and, you know, just so you understand, all of you here, I know you're not skilled attorneys, and this is strange for you. I treat everyone like they are represented by a very skilled attorney, because I think you're entitled, you know, to every defense possible. Because there's such a disproportionate between the sovereign and the individual. The resources of the sovereign are vast. But in your case, the city took a video. Mm -hmm. But the video is from like 15 feet high. So the video was on this angle. So obviously you can see the sign. But your vehicle is coming at, so the video was this high, and your car is here. Mm -hmm. Right. So when you're coming back with your car, those balloons and the teddy bear and everything else would, would obviously obstruct your view, in my opinion. And I, mm -hmm. I, so I really think that uh, given the fact that they shouldn't be there, they're there all the time, and when they are, I usually take it into consideration. So I'm going to give you a break on, it, on, that Thank you. on that basis. Is there anything else you want to tell us to do before you leave? I mean, so No, far. I think you're doing a great job. Oh, oh no. She, <laughs> five, five minutes ago, she wasn't so... Uh, <laughs> Do you want to represent anybody else in the courtroom before you leave? No, they're good. <laughs> All right. Uh, when are you coming back? <laughs> oh, not too soon. <laughs> I don't Once want, a year, maybe. I don't want you going by there and, and waiting until the, the balloons and the teddy bear are up again and say, oh, boy, I'm going to go there again. <laughs> don't do it again. I won't. All right. I promise. Thank you. Good luck. Appreciate it.